feed the flesh for one last time for a few hours, and uh, you'll be okay. Uh, Mark chapter 2, I want you to turn your Bibles there. Mark chapter number 2, and I'm going to read a scripture. I'm just going to be a few minutes here tonight, okay? I, I, I believe I am. I'll do my best to make it short and sweet and try to motivate you to fast a little bit here tonight. Mark chapter 2, verse 18, are you there? The Bible says, The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were fasting. But then they came and they said to him, Jesus, why do, why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but yours do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. No one sews a piece of unshrunk clothing to an old garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old one and tears and makes it worse. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts burst the wineskins and the wine is spilled, and then the wineskins are ruined. But the new wine must be put in to new wineskins. Okay? Lord, bless your word for the next few moments. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to just give you a few things here today why fasting is important for us, you know. And if you belong to this church, uh, whether you're new or you're new in the home, men's home, women's home, new to the church, or you've been here even especially over the last few years, you know, you have to know this is something that my wife and I have been leaning into. This was something in early 2020 that we began to do within our life, and we've been doing it for the last two years, many times fasting on water for two days, two days out of the week. And, and we've experienced in our own personal life just breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. See, there are some things that you're going through right now that are not being broken because you haven't fasted. There are some problems and struggles that you can't seem to get, get, get through it. You can't seem to, to break through it. You can't seem like you've done everything, right? You've, you've done everything that you're supposed to do. And you just still can't seem to just feel that burst, that breakthrough. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's a loved one getting saved. Maybe it's just a personal struggle that you have, a personal temptation you have, just something that you can't just, like, you know, your flesh keeps winning the battle. Yeah, well, I'm here to tell you, you know what you've been missing? You've been missing this area of fasting. Trust me on this one. Raul's up here talking about fasting. I go, he fasts. I know he fasts. Because you can't just come up here and talk like that if you don't fast. People will see right through that. My God. So in our opening scripture that I read here just a few seconds ago, Jesus was asked why his disciples were not fasting. And he simply replied, he replied that, that when the friends of the bridegroom are with him, uh, it's, it's, it's not a sad occasion. And the Pharisees fast, but look at the Pharisees. Yeah, they fast, but they look so sad when they fast. They look disfigured. They look mad. Come on, somebody. If some of you look mad tonight. Come on. You'll, look, you'll be even madder tomorrow around 2 in the afternoon, trust me. <laughs> See, but Jesus was saying, you guys fast out of religion. You fast out of dates. You fast out of times. He says, he says, the bridegroom, I'm the bridegroom, what he was basically saying. And he was saying that since I'm the bridegroom, you know, um, um, the bridegroom speaks of a love language, if you will. So he's telling them, you should not fast out of religion, but you should fast out of love. He's saying, see, the Pharisees and John, they fast out of religion. But I'm the bridegroom, and one day he says, I won't be here, and then they'll fast. In other words, they're going to fast because they miss me. And they want my presence. They're going to miss my presence. And they're going to fast because they want me, not because out of religion, not because pastor said so, not because the church is on a nine-day. Come on, somebody, but because I want his presence in my life, and I miss God. Some of you need to fast and jump on these next nine days because God misses you. And if the truth were to be told, you miss him too. Come on, somebody. So fast out of love. I want, how many want the bridegroom back in their life? Jesus says there's going to be a time when I'm not here. And then my disciples that are so in love with me will be so lovesick that they will not eat. Come on, somebody. You ever been so lovesick you didn't eat? Come on. Remember when you were in the seventh grade? Let me rewind the DVD. Dear diary, oh my God. 
He's so cute. But he doesn't even know me. Every time I see him, my heart just putters. I can't even eat. Remember those days? Love sick? When you're love sick, you don't eat. You ain't hearing me today. Before I talk about, real quick, about fasting, we should talk about some wrong reasons to fast. Real quick, stay with me, take some notes. We should not fast to obtain merit from God. In other words, you don't get no extra credit to be earned. He doesn't give you a gold star by your name for acts of religion. You should not fast to ensure some future benefits, if you will. The only thing that gives us merit with God is the blood of Jesus. That's the only thing that sets us free. You should not fast just to lose weight. Because some of you are like thinking that in the back of your mind. You know, I could afford, I could afford I'm sure if I... So I'm going to pig out tonight. <laughs> till 11.59, 59. <sighs> I remember doing that, man. I, I got home. When was it, baby? It was, I forgot. It was just about a week ago. I got home, and then I, I fell out, and then I woke up like Tuesday night, and I'm like, I got 10 minutes. It was like 11.50. <laughs> yeah, I went downstairs. When was it? Yeah, I was eating cereal. She's like, are you eating? Be quiet, sis. Be quiet, sis. <laughs> so you should not fast to lose weight. That should not be your motive, okay? It's not a Christian diet, okay? It's a plus, however, when it happens, but fasting is for spiritual purpose. Another reason why we should, uh, another um, wrong reason to fast is that you should not fast to be noticed by other people. Do not go around acting all spiritual now. Oh, you will get spiritual, but don't all start like looking down at people now. And then you look at their Facebook posts, and you're all, they go to our church, and they're not, look at their lunch, they're eating lunch. <laughs> Aren't we supposed to be fasting? But see, I knew it. I knew they were in the flesh. See, the goal to fasting is so that you can decrease and that he could increase inside of your life. So I'm going to give you real quick, moving fast here. Come on, somebody. I'm going to let you go eat. <laughs> In my opinion, three major, three major changes that will ha happen when you bring fasting into your life. Number one, it will bring a spirit of release in your life. It's going to bring a spirit of release in your life. And let me just tell you this. Some of us need some release in our life. There are certain strongholds, I'll say certain spirits that have been taunting you and messing with you that will not be released if from you or your loved ones, come on somebody, until someone gets down to business and fasting and praying. My God, don't miss that one. Matthew 17 says basically of the same, uh, no, excuse me, Matthew 17, 14 to 21, that, uh, that, that, that there was a family that had a son that was demon possessed. And the disciples tried to cast out him, but they had no success. And I love the fact that in that story of Matthew 17, 14 through 21, that it was the father that brought the son to Jesus. And he says, listen, your disciples tried to cast out this demon. And then, and then, but, but they couldn't. They couldn't cast him out. And then Jesus gets involved. So the father initiates the miracle. Jesus gets involved. And he begins to pray for the child. And the child gets delivered in an instant. And the father says, why could not they cast it out? The disciples ask, why could we not cast it out? Come on, somebody. And Jesus says, because this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting. Come on, somebody. So it's a spirit of release that's going to be released. Come on, just from six to six, you can do it. Come on, somebody. It's going to pay off big time within your life. It's going to give you a, a release that you haven't you've been waiting for. Come on, somebody. Some of us are so bound, we don't even know we're bound. Some of us are so used to being bound that we don't know any other way. To, even if you were to be free, you would still try to bind yourself back up because you're not used to being. Come on, somebody. But God told me to tell you today that if you will step out tomorrow for nine days from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., you can do it, man. He's going to bring a release on you. He's going to bring a release on your family. He's going to deliver you. He's going to heal your marriage. He's going to heal your kids. He might even mess around and save 
the unsavable in your family? Is there something that breaks demonic assignments over your family like fasting? The enemy does not want you to know this. That's why it's a little empty here tonight. The, the, the enemy done did his job. Picked off a few people on the way to church. So then they go, well, I don't have to fast. I wasn't there last night. <laughs> See, the enemy doesn't want you to know this. Trust me on this, my friend. But if you fast and if you pray, nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. Isaiah 58 shows that fasting can help people who suffer from addictions, immorality, basically those who cannot control their flesh. Come on, somebody. When you fast, things will break off of you. Your spirit man will begin to get stronger than your flesh man. It's going to bring a spirit of release. Trust me. How many just want that? How many, there's some things that you can't control. Talk to me tonight, man. There's just some things you can't control. Those urges you can't Can we just be honest tonight? Just some things that you can't shake. Things that... When I'm not shaking you. It's just like you tried it all. I prayed. I pray. I pray. They lay hands on me. I make altar call after altar call after altar call. I lift. I pray. I'm doing it. I give. I give. I give. I, I, I declare. I declare. I declare. You're missing something, my brother and my sister. And maybe you're missing that ingredient of fasting within your life. My God. Another thing that changes while you're fasting is not only will the spirit of release come upon your life, but there will be a spirit of restoration over your life. The biblical meaning for restoration is to revive back more than has been lost to the point where the final state is greater than the original condition. The main point is that someone or something is improved beyond measure. Come on, somebody. You are going to reinvent yourself. People are going to look at you and go, I mean, your name's the same. Your address is the same. Your hair is the same. Girl, what'd you do? Boy, what just something different? What, what happened? Uh, did you hook up with somebody? Yeah, I did. I did. I done hooked up with somebody. I done hooked up with the Holy Ghost. And if you're married and your 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 wife might even get a little jelly. Your husband may look at you crazy. Like, who are you, you seeing someone on the side? You say, yeah, I am seeing someone on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in a love affair right now as we speak. Yeah, I'm in a love affair. Yeah, I'm seeing him right now. He's right here with me right now. Come on, somebody. Yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a Jewish man. He's a carpenter. Oh, he's a strong man. Oh, he's got a six-pack. He's got wavy hair. Come on, somebody. I better stop. I better stop. I better stop. I better stop. Someone say restoration. restoration. Come on, somebody. Repeatedly throughout the Bible, God blesses people for their faith and hardships by making up for their losses given to them. Come on, somebody. From previous losses from before. Joel 2.25 says, I will make up for the years you lost. I will make up for the locusts that have devastated your life. The locusts who had savaged you and you've lost deadly, fierce locusts of doom. The Bible says that great locust invasion, uh, um, I'll make up for the years of the locusts that have destroyed you. The great locust devastation, the Bible says. Locusts that have savaged, the deadly, the fierce, the doom. He uses all these words. And then he goes on to say, the God who has set you back on your heels in wonder. Never again will, people, will my people be despised. You will know without question that I am in the thick of your life. He goes on to say that I am your God. Yes, your God, the one who heals. Come on, somebody. And then he goes on to say, never again will my people be despised. That's restoration. So everything the devil stole from you, he's getting ready back to restore for you. You lost your dignity, he's going to restore it to you. You lost, you lost your way, he's getting ready to restore it to you. Push away. You're but one meal, one happy meal away from your breakthrough. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Like, don't eat the nugget tomorrow, man. Don't do it. Your worst enemy is going to try to buy you lunch tomorrow. Don't fall for it. 
your stomach, your flesh is going to say, help. And you, you let that spirit man just say, no, back up off me. Get away from me. I, I, I'm, I'm in a battle right now. Come on, just breathe on them. Your breath will be kicking anyway. So just... I just carry these around. I try it. Anyway. Listen, the enemy has stolen things from people's lives and your life. But for those who seek God by fasting, there's going to come a spirit. I speak it over your life tonight of restoration over you. You'll see a restoration over your health. You'll see a restoration over your marriage. You'll see a restoration over your family. You're going to see a restoration over your finances. I pray that over your life today. So a spirit of what was number one? Release. Number two? And finally, there's going to be a spirit of reward. Hebrews 11.6 says God is a rewarder of those who seek him. He rewards those who seek him. And let me tell you right now, if you're fasting, you're seeking him. Your stomach grumbling tomorrow? It's going to be embarrassing to you and annoying to those around you? But it's, it's music to God's ears. He says, oh, I love that. Oh, he mo I, I feel he's attracted to a rumbling stomach. Oh, I, I really truly believe that, man. Come on, somebody. Some of you say, well, I got to work all day. I can't pray. I thought I was praying and fasting. Your fasting is a prayer. It's an all-day prayer. It's all day. You, you may not have the posture, and you go to your car and punch, the, pull out your Bible, get the flesh under control. But just know that your fasting is a, is, a, is, a, is a constant prayer to him. For those who seek him through praying and fasting, trust me, my brothers and my sisters, there will be a reward for you. So proclaim tomorrow and for the rest of these nine days, okay? And then next weekend, okay, Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to let you pick what fast you want. You know, you're not happy about that. You want me to... You, Daniel fast, which is vegetables and fruit, whatever, on the weekend. I'm going to be nice to you, okay? Or stick to it. I'll be eating vegetables on Saturday. <laughs> Proclaim a financial reward over you. Proclaim your healing over your body. Proclaim some freedom over your life. Proclaim restoration over your life. Do not limit God in these next nine days. But let this be your time. Let this be your time. I want us to understand that when we fast, listen carefully now, I'm done. That we are not twisting God's arm and making him do things for us. But we are simply positioning ourselves and we're preparing our hearts for what he has for us in the next season. Fasting is not a magic, a, a, a magic wand with magical formula, with spiritual dust we have, throwing it all over. But it, my friend, is a sacrifice. You be a living sacrifice. You're going to be a living sacrifice. Come on, somebody. A living sacrifice. I'm going to consecrate my life. I'm sanctifying my life. See, what God did for us, yeah, what he did for us on the cross, that was like sanctification. Through the blood, we're sanctified, okay? But when we fast, we are consecrating ourselves. So what's the difference? The difference is sanctification is what he did for us. Consecration is now saying, God, what can I do for you? I'm a living sacrifice. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I'm just putting myself at the altar, God, for 12 hours. And I'm going to just do it. Sometimes the day is going to go by fast. And sometimes it's going to go by slow. But that does not matter. Because when you've decided, and you have to decide today... Don't decide tomorrow when you wake up because if you decide then, you'll, you'll, you'll break it real fast. I'm telling you, 
Like, you got, you got like five hours to decide. If you haven't decided already, man, while I'm preaching to you. Don't decide tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm going to do it. And then, and then lunchtime comes. I'll do it tomorrow. Tonight. I got eight more days. It ain't going to work, man. You got to decide. Trust me. If you decide, like in your heart, like tonight, you'll stick with it. You'll fight for it. Is this okay to preach to, to our church here tonight? I mean, sometimes you, you guys look real religious sometimes on me. I'm trying to get this church to break through. I'm trying to get this church in the building. I'm trying to get us like not religious. Not You know what religion is? Religion is on the outside you look good, but on the inside you're a mess. That's religion. You know what? You know what, I, what I'm trying to get us to? Or who cares what the outside looks like? What I because the inside will eventually fix the outside. I want to start on the inside. I want to get I want to break these things in my life, these chains in my life, this anger in my life, this insecurity in my life, this anxiety in my life. I want it broken. I, I want these addictions that I that God delivered me from 24 years ago to be gone forever. They still try to haunt me. They still try to come back. But praying and fasting will break them forever. All my life, all my life you have been faithful. It's a sacrifice. It's a surrender. All my life you have been so It's obedience. It's a trap you to 